Hello world, it's Curtis Potter with Boundless. Today I'm sitting here in front of you, in front of all my paint supplies. And um, I did this a couple weeks ago. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just kind of me. I've had some customers that I've done work for that asked me if I was OCD. Um, and, and... You know, I had to transition and say it differently. Like, no, I'm not OCD. I just like to pay attention in detail. But see, that's how I like things to look. Like in my cabinets, I like my dishes to, to face forward. And um, my pantry, I like all the food to face forward where I can just walk in and be like, man, what can of soup do I want today? What, what item do I want today? I like it to be organized, like all the pastas here and, and you know, all the, this food is there and kind of like in its own category, like each one of these gallons is, you know, a certain type of gray, a certain type of primer, a certain type of this or that or that, right? The spray cans are all right there, all the tools, all my paint tools, well, some of the paint tools. <laughs> I've got a ton. But, you know, it's just order, right? And I had heard this statistic, um, I don't know, a couple couple months ago, and I kind of smiled, but then I was real about it. And see, the, the statistic says that if you are organized, I don't even, I don't even remember if it said highly organized, um, just, just efficiently organized, then that can save you around four hours a week. And you're like, well, how's that possible? Because see, all the time that, that you have to, um, find things like, man, I know where I, I put this somewhere, um, that takes time. All the time that, that you're scavenging to, to get ready for something and is like, man, if I would have just, for instance, do, I, I like to do the laundry. I mean, all stuff goes in the laundry basket in front of the washer and dryer. And as soon as that first basket gets filled, I throw it in the washer and then doing stuff around the house. And as soon as I hear that thing beep, I'll go ahead and just go throw it in the dryer. Be doing stuff around the house. And then as soon as the dryer goes off, because that's how you keep things from like getting wrinkled, is fold them instantly after they're dried. I'll go fold it and then put them away. And I, I, um, I heard a successful person say that the one of the best ways to save time in your life is only pick something up once. So for instance, like that, like if I would have picked up the laundry that was clean and folded, but then take it into my bedroom and put it on the sitting chair right there or put it on top of the dresser and not put it away. Then later on, I'm gonna have to come back and restart that task and finish it. So see, that takes time. All the little things of not being organized and you know, kind of like, like we tell our kids, and I heard my mom say, when you're done with something, put it up. But it's like, how often do we do that? You know, after, after dinner, I like to just go ahead and do the dishes and put them away. Put them in the washer, or I mean dishwasher, or, you know, even if you're hand washing them, hand wash them, put them in the rack. As soon as you wake up in the morning, put them away. Obviously, that's not one you can just do instantly if they're wet, unless I guess you hand, uh, hand dry them. But... I wanted you to think about four hours a week. I don't know about you, but plenty of times in my life, I was like, man, there's not enough time in the day. Man, there's not enough time in the week. <clears throat> man, I don't see how people get so much done. I just wish I had more time. Well, this is a cheat code for you to have more time. It's stay organized. See, I had boxes of this paint and they were all getting mixed together because um, they had got put put up on the shelf and and <clears throat> I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't even know exactly how many of each type of paint, primer, and so forth that I even have. And it's like, you know what? It's time to get organized. When I saw that statistic, they also said that 
Okay, you take four hours a week that you've gained. There's 52 weeks in the year. That's 208 extra hours a year. 208 hours is actually like four point, I mean, I'm sorry, 5.3, I think, um, extra 40 hour weeks in a year. Five extra weeks a year. So you imagine you go to a job, you put in 40 hours every single week and you're like, man, I need some more time. Now imagine if you decided, hey, I'm gonna get super organized and save that four hours a week and I'm gonna build a business. I'm gonna write a book. I'm gonna work towards this dream or goal. I'm gonna read more books. I'm gonna set aside time for, for um, seminars and workshops. Maybe I'm gonna volunteer. You know what, I need more time with my family. This is, this is the time that I'm gonna set aside to my family. That extra four hours a week is an extra five, 40 hour weeks a year. And then if you look at all a little bit grander scheme of things, if you stay dedicated to this for five years of being highly organized, then that adds an extra 1,040 hours that you've saved by being organized, which is actually 26 40 hour weeks. So if you put it in 10 year spectrum, like, you know what, this is going to be something that I'm going to change for the rest of my life. Like, yes, the rest of my life. That's an extra 2,080 hours that you've saved by being organized, which just happens to be an extra 52 40-hour weeks. There's 52 weeks in a year. So in 10 years, you can gain a year. Every 10 years, you can gain a year when it becomes to time. So for me, I'm 35. I truly feel like I'm going to live to be 100. That's 65 years I've got left to live. And if I get highly organized, then I can gain an extra six and a half years. Imagine if you put six and a half years into a business. Like for me, it's, it's boundless inspiration. My goal and, and I know it's going to happen one day is I'm going to be a public speaker where I'm on a stage just going around getting paid to inspire people and help people change their lives. Imagine by the end of my life, if I have an extra six and a half years to invest into that. It wasn't going to happen by me being unhealthy and eating crap and not exercising. Just imagine if I dedicate that time to getting healthy, not only physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially. Like there's that time that you want to get back. I listen to podcasts all the time. And if you're looking for an amazing podcast to listen to that can hit you on every level of growth as a human to help you become boundless, I highly recommend the Ed Milet Max Out podcast. The one that I just listened to this week had Kurt Warner on it. And it talked about his movie that's coming out. I think it's called The Comeback Story, maybe. I can't wait to see it. But in that podcast, Kurt Warner was talking about how, you know, he was, had went through college and was going into the NFL, had, um, was almost on the Green Bay Packers, and um, he didn't make the cut. And he's like, man, I have so many uh, talents, so many so many things in the, that I know that I could be successful in the NFL that's above all these other people that, that are starting. Why can I not, like, why am I not getting chosen? And he ended up having to go work at a grocery store and he was stocking shelves. And see, the thing is, is finally he talked to the coach, was like, coach, like, why not me? And the coach said, because, man, you just, you haven't shown us what we needed to see in practice. And he said, but I know that if you just give me the opportunity to be in the game, I'll win. I know it. I know it. And he's like, but the problem is, is we don't know it based on what you're doing in practice. See, it's not what you do in the moment 
of situations. It's, it's all that time and effort that you put into becoming the best version of yourself in the practice, in the times when people don't see you. It's 5 a.m. right now. It's those moments when, when you get up early to work towards your dreams and goals. Nobody's going to see you reading a book at the end of the night before, uh, before you go to bed. And except for like your spouse and your kids. And that's why I read to my kids every night. But you know, none of you see that. It's like that meme that you see. It's an iceberg. And, and, and people say that it's, it's like success. You only see what's above the water. And it's normally that not that much that's above the water. But below it, icebergs go really deep. You know, 40, 50, 100, 200 feet deep. Or probably more and that's what you don't see, all that effort, all that, that time you put in in the practice before you get your breakthrough in whatever you're trying to do. So Kurt Warner went into that grocery store, and, and every night after he stocked his shelves, everybody had an aisle that they had to face all the labels forward. And see, funny enough, I did this... Um, probably about a month ago now when I, when I organized all this pancakes and I can't tell you how many people that's came here and they've, they've mentioned it. So it puts a smile on my face and it's awesome when people see that, but sometimes they don't. But see what Kurt Warner said was whenever he had got that, that talk with that coach, he was like, you know what? I'm going to step it up on every area of my life. Cause he realized that he was being average in some areas, especially in the practice. And he said, you know what? I'm going to make sure that I have the best label-faced aisle out of anybody that works in that grocery store. And in the podcast, he said, you know what? I don't even know if anyone ever noticed. I never got a compliment from my manager. No, ever, no employees said, hey, man, your aisle looks a lot better than mine. You know, people are likely aren't going to do that. But he said it was for me. It was for me that I did that. To step it up on every area of my life. And you know what? I had decided this a while back as well. I was like, you know what? How can I be the best human that I can be? That boundless version. Like, what does boundless really mean? Being the best human I can be, the best father I can be, the best friend, the best husband, the best leader, the best mentor, the best speaker, the best worker. You know what? Like, I've even made a decision to make my bed every single morning. I put it off on my wife. Like, there's no, you know, like this, this theory that there's got to be roles in a marriage, like, that's the woman's job. You know what? Like, I like coming home at night and getting into a fresh made bed. So, like, why should I put that off on her if that's not something that she's, like, that desires in her heart? But I do, so why not? Am I too good to make a bed, to do some dishes, to organize a pantry? No. No. And neither are you. You're not, you're not too good to do anything, especially if it means something to you. I heard a long time ago, if you have an opinion about something, then you better back it up with the effort to fix it. Not just be like, oh, you should do this, you should do that. Like, Why not help and make it the way that you honestly want it to be? Am I the best steward of the things that I'm blessed with on this life? Am I striving to have the best health, the best wealth, the best my uh, mentality, the best finances? Like, am I putting order in every area of my life? Folks, that's what balance is all about. It's not me pointing at you. Because remember, you got them three fingers back at me and one at God. This is about how we all together can look ourselves in the mirror and say, 2021 was a cluster, right? COVID messed everything up. Life throws some curveballs at you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It was like that last year, too. Oh, damn. The year before, 
pretty unorganized. Why my business failed? Um, maybe a little bit of unorganization, procrastination. Not practicing hard enough for the situations that I was going to get put in. Man, it's hard to admit. But see, those situations of or unorganization that set you up for that sporadicness. Have you ever been on like going to something and you really wanted to be there on time? And you set aside time to be there early? And then the morning came and, and you're like, oh, let's get outfits together. Instead, why didn't I put them out last night? <clears throat> now we're like, oh, man. And then I can't tell you how many times we were on time. And then my daughter threw up all over herself in the car. I'm just like, <clears throat> Cypress, that outfit was adorable. I mean, one time we, we looked in the diaper bag and we didn't even have an extra outfit. Because like the last two times she she <laughs> she gets car sick like her daddy did when when I was young, puked all over herself like the last three times we were in the car three days in a row, and we didn't have any outfits in her, and we were on our way to church and i'm I'm almost certain this time it was like Easter, so she had this adorable outfit on, and then so we're we're <laughs> I can't do anything but laugh at this. We're on our way to church. We're early. We're going to church an hour and 15 minutes from our house. She pukes on herself. We don't have an outfit. We had to stop at the Dollar General, buy her, try to get the cutest outfit you can because it's easier. Then we go to church. Well, because of COVID, you had to pre-reserve um, your seats. And we had already reserved our seats and we were like up at the front. So we get in there and I mean, we we were late. But our seats were already reserved. And sure enough, the pastor called us out in front of the whole church. He didn't say our names, but he's like, now, folks, if you're going to be sitting up front, don't be showing up late. And my wife and I just looked at each other like, please, pastor, forgive us. <laughs> we were really on time. We were early. Right. So sometimes that organization. You know what? Sometimes it's like, man. When we knew we took that outfit out last time, yesterday and the day before, that organization could have saved us. It is what it is. It's a growing moment. See, I don't talk to you about any of these things to get you to feel down on yourself. Just laugh at it and say, you know what? It is what it is. Nothing more, nothing less. That's one of the um, the the laws, the um, universal laws. It is what it is. Nothing more, nothing less. How can you turn this mess into a message? How can you take this burden into a blessing? How can you use this opportunity as a, as a moment of growth? Because I don't care what age you are. If you get highly organized, this can gain you 208 hours a year. What can you do with 208 hours? Have you been saying, man, there's not enough time in the day? What could you do with an extra 208 hours with your life? Is there places in your life where you could use some more organization to become the best version of yourself? Today, I just invite you, open your mind, look in the mirror, be honest with yourself, take some ownership, be the source. Let's be intentional with the rest of our lives. Man, Christmas this weekend, New Year's Eve next weekend, 2022, what? I mean, it's like in... Not even two weeks, like 10 days is 2022. If 2021, 2020 wasn't the best years of your life, maybe it's time to look in the mirror and say, what do we got to do for the rest of this year to set us up for success? How can we get organized in the rest of this year? You know what? Like You're like, man, I'm just ready for this year to be over. All right, let's spend the rest of this year getting organized. So that 2022 is the best year of your life to the day, and it just sets you up. Or 2023 is even better than 22. 24 is better than 23. Man, I don't even want to keep saying this because it makes me feel old. See the gray hairs. But let's make the best of our life the rest of our life, right? The rest of our life is going to be the best of our lives. Start with now. Start with next year. The next year. The next year. Let's knock them out. Let's get organized. 
and let's set ourselves up for success. If this video helped you or know someone who would, you know the drill. Like, share, comment, tag somebody, send in their DM, send in a message. If you are humble enough and you really want to change, put it in the comment section. This is where I'm going to get organized in my life. I'll be happy to, to connect with you every so often, however often you want. If you tag me in it and say, Curtis, will you challenge me to this? Dude, I promise you, I will message you every single day and say, you doing this, you doing this, you doing this. Because see, this is not just Curtis becoming balanced. This is not just you becoming balanced. It's us working together every single day, just another step closer to breaking those chains on the things that are holding us back so we can reach our full potential, achieve everything that we want in life and become balanced together. I love you all. Thank you again for all the support, the lifting up, the stories, the testimonies. Again, I love it when you send me in the DMs, but please put them in the comment section below as well so that others can see your testimony and see how it's possible for us all to become boundless. It's possible for us all to break chains. We've all went through it. None of us have had this amazing, perfect, happy-go-lucky, flawless life. We've all made mistakes. We've all fallen down. We've all had failures. And it's all right because as, as long as you get back up, you fall down seven times, you get back up eight, you refuse to quit. You will never lose if you refuse to quit. Eventually, you add up them 208 hours, five years, you'll have that goal. Now, I know we're a microwave generation where we want it now. Put it in, you know what, in five years. By five years, I will accomplish this. I love you all. Be boundless. Have a great day.